Yeah. Yeah, sure, that's fine. So, uh, my first crush was uh, Sadie Knoll. Uh, she was uh, Old Order Mennonite, and uh, I was Old Order Amish. And we, we went to a one room school, and the school we went to was, we could say it was diversified because there were, when, when her family started going there, um, there were four different sects. There were Amish and, and three variations of Mennonites attending this one room school. <laughs> <laughs> um, her, her family um, went from Old Order Mennonite to what, what is, uh, is known as Black Bomber Mennonite. So they started driving cars and uh, became important later. She, uh, or they, <laughs> ended up wearing shorter skirts. Uh, <laughs> and, and they could have their hair in, in, in a ponytail as opposed to pigtails or braids. But uh, I, knew, I knew Sadie, she, her, her father and my father were uh, uh, business partners. And um, so I knew her, I, I, I didn't really, pay much attention to her. She had a younger brother who I got in trouble with. And, and about fifth grade, for some reason, they, her, her family, her, her and her siblings, uh, came to our school. They had been going to public school prior to that, I think. It was the whole Wisconsin versus Yoder school issue. And, and so anyway, they, you know, I, I didn't know anything about that. It just, they just showed up. and. Uh, uh, I didn't really pay much attention to, to Sadie till sometime seventh or eighth grade. Uh, I, uh, I guess I started noticing her. I remember for some reason, no idea why, me and her were dismissed early and I remember walking out through uh, the walks from off the porch from the school and she was quiet. Her, her sister, you know, was the gregarious, outgoing one her sister had asked me to play chess and got all the other boys mad at me. I don't know why. Was I violating some ethic about, you know, playing kids intermingling with the girls or not? Or were they just jealous? I, I never know. But, <laughs> but uh, Sadie was chattery that day, and, and it really made an impression on me. And I probably mumbled something. I don't know. And I was really sad that she walked in one direction home and I didn't walk in the other direction. And she might have been riding her bike. We couldn't have bikes. <laughs> <laughs> so so Sadie made an impression on me. And uh, I remember uh, skating on a farm pond where we played Crack the Whip. I got to hold her hand once. That was pretty cool. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was high for a couple of days following that one. Uh, but, you know, time marched on. Sadie was a little older than me. I think she might have been held back for a grade because as soon as she was out of school, I think their dating age was 15 or something. She had a suitor waiting, so she was old enough, and he had a really hot car. And I just had a buggy. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, long story short, she went her ways, I went my ways. Um, and one of the things that, uh, you know, as you probably are aware, I'm not wearing a hat and dark clothes, so I kind of became what I think of as a non compliant Amish person. And, um, um, but the prelude to that, why I was still a practicing member, was I started hanging out with the fire company. It was my outlet, and I ended up taking these EMT, uh, first aid courses and CPR, and I was good at it. I was never good at practicing it, but I was good at taking the courses, and it was my intellectual outlet. I, I think I was bored to tears being Amish, I'll just say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, I, I ended up going more and more into this and deeper and deeper uh, uh, educational, uh, more de higher levels of, uh, of first responder training. I ended up uh, taking an EMT class and uh, I was uh, 
here at Lancaster General Hospital taking a class and, and it was going towards the end of the class and we were doing a drill. We, we practiced like three people pretending they're a, an ambulance, responding ambulance to a call. And um, our call was something in a public park at a, at a restroom. I'm not sure what the description was. But we, it, the, the, it played out in the bowels of the hospital in a restroom in the hospital. And um, so we go in there and the, the, the instructor set us up. He'd hired uh, uh, students from the local theater company. And I'd never, I'd never you know, been at a theater, so I didn't know. But the, 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 tr the, the thing was, one of the girls had, had a miscarriage. And she was just sitting on, in, on the floor in, in, in the booth. And the other girl was there to distract us, see if we would figure out who needs our help. And she was in five alarm, and I'll step away from the mic. Crescendoing <laughs> 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 in that small space. I forgot everything I learned. They quickly designated me as the runner. Go get <laughs> Go, go get stuff, whatever. And I'm making my way out of the, the hallway in, in opening the door. And the sound is just practically blowing me out the door. I reach for the door. It opens inward. It's, it kind of starts coming my way. And I pull it open. And there's Sadie Nolt. <laughs> She's at the hospital. She's pregnant. She's at the hospital with her husband. They're taking birthing classes. She's looking for a bathroom, and she's looking at me. What are you doing? <laughs> and I've never seen her since. <laughs> <laughs>